Hello everyone, Ben here with a solo game of Root. Uh, so in the solo game, you can, uh, sorry, you are playing against the Mechanical Marquise, which is a dedicated faction. Uh, it does, however, use the cat pieces, so you cannot play as the cats versus the Marquise. Uh, so in this case, we are then playing as the Lizard Cult. The setup for your faction is exactly the same as a normal game. Uh, we have the uh, garden opposite the cat's keep in the corner there, and then the warriors. Uh, Garm's on our board, and the outcast marker wherever we specify at the start anyway. And then our hand of three cards. Uh, the mechanical marquise is set up very similarly to uh, a normal game. However, it does not place out buildings, and it does not use wood in any way. So, none of that. Uh, and then instead of three cards, it has five cards in a order of operations, basically, that it is going to use throughout the game. And we'll definitely see how that works when we get round to it. So we get the first turn, and every faction basically has a birdsong, a daylight, and an evening phase. And then it's just what you do in that particular phase, is, as well as your uh, special faction abilities that kind of change up the gameplay. So, at the start of the game, or sorry, at the start of our turn, we get uh, Birdsong. So we get to adjust the outcast, discard Lost Souls, perform conspiracies. This is all to do with the cards that go into our Lost Souls box uh, when cards get discarded. Nothing there at the moment, so we do not get to uh, adjust the outcast, we don't get to discard any cards, and we don't get to perform conspiracies because we do not have any Acolytes yet in our Acolytes box. So we can essentially skip that for the first turn. Then we come on to Daylight, and you don't have to reveal all your cards, but considering this is a solo game, we may as well just technically reveal all our cards, and then you can do stuff based on uh, what the suits are. Birds are unfortunately not that great unless you're getting Acolytes, so we'll put that to one side. So essentially we have two Fox cards. So we can build in a Fox clearing where we rule, and there are various clearings on the board. You have rabbits, you have mice, and you have foxes. Uh, so we can build in a fox clearing. We rule. We can recruit in a fox clearing, and this can be any clearing. We don't have to rule there. We can just plonk down a warrior wherever we like, or we could score it. So basically, we remove the card, uh, and we score that many points depending on how many gardens we put out. So I think, considering we can't actually build yet in any fox clearings, we'll definitely do a couple of recruits. So. Uh, we could actually, well, we'll put one guy there and then it might be worth tying up one of the clearings where not, we not yet are, so we'll put another guy over there. Uh, and then we could use the bird card to sacrifice. So basically use the card and we'll take off uh, one warrior and place it into the Acolytes box. So at least we have some someone to do something with, hopefully next turn. So, done. Uh, cards come back into hand at the end of daylight, or at the beginning of evening, sorry, and then we can craft. So essentially we check our outcast suit, and you check the number of relevant gardens you have, and you can do uh, those particular crafts. Well, we don't have enough uh, foxes, fox gardens for the arms trader, or for the fox, fo folks, uh, fox folk steel, so we won't be doing either of those crafting, so we'll skip crafting, and we will go on to drawing. So, similar to most factions, you basically get one card uh, into your hand, plus any revealed uh, draw card icons you've got on your board, so you'll get one card, and then if you're over five, you discard down to five. So that is fine. Uh, then we go over to the Mechanical Marquise. Uh, you can play the Mechanical Marquise competitively, so it can be a, another faction that everyone else gangs up on, basically, uh, and tries to take out. However, if you're doing the co-op mode, this is essentially a co-op mode uh, with one player, you then have to take certain things into effect. Uh, during Birdsong, so it would normally get 
two points per claim where it has at least three warriors in its ruling. However, in a corp game, it will get one point per opposing faction, basically. So it is essentially going to get a default one point every turn. And that sets a bit of a timer. However, if the game goes to 30 turns, I'll be extremely surprised. Uh, and then normally it does not need to rule, uh, sorry, normally it needs to rule in a clearing in order to recruit, and we'll see how recruiting happens in a second. But uh, for the co-op game, it can just plonk down warriors anywhere it likes. So kind of similar to the lizard cult in that aspect. So we did birdsong for the mechanical monarchies, and it got its default point. Then we do the daylight phase. So we take the leftmost card from the order of operations. Uh, that's annoying. So it does battle, move, recruit. And then in the case of this one, because there is technically no recruit, uh, there is no crafting on it, so there's no recruit step, it will skip out recruiting and go straight back up to the top and it will do another card and then do the whole thing again. So that is a bit of a pain, especially so because it is a bird card. So normally it would have to uh, obviously match up the suit of the card to a relevant clearing in order to do battle and moving. However, because it's a bird card, it gets to do everything, everywhere. So it can battle in every clearing. So we'll start over here and we'll see all of our warriors going to the Acolyte box very quickly. So that is indeed going to be a hit a piece. So basically the attacker does the highest value die, normally, and the defender does the lowest value and hits. And you can only do the hits up to the number of warriors you've got. So in this case, three and two, but they're both going to do one hit. And it is simultaneously, so uh, they will take each other out. Uh, that guy should go into the Acolytes box. Uh, we'll do this top left one over here. So again, one and one. I suppose it is taking the cats out somewhat. We'll do that one over there. Three and zero, unfortunately. So we do lose our guy and nothing happens to the cats. And then finally down here in this box clearing. Uh, two and one. So we do have two pieces to lose and it did do two hits, but there is only one warrior attacking. So it will just be one and one again. Back. To. Well, that's a useful number of acolytes anyway. That might be useful for uh, converting, certainly. So we'll do that and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so done with battles. It's not going to move because there are not more than three warriors in any particular clearing. And then it would recruit, but again, no crafting cost on the cards. So we'll skip that. This will get discarded. And because we are playing the Lizard Cult, any cards that get discarded go into our Lost Souls before they go anywhere else, including ones that come from the Mechanical Marquise's order. And then it reels another card and does the whole thing again. So it is going to battle in mouse clearings. So if you were lucky enough to survive the first round of battles, you may get a second round of battles and have to do it all over again. Uh, but we got wiped out, so no more battles. Uh, no more moves, and then recruiting two warriors so you look at the crafting cost and it has a crafting cost of two in this case it's only two warriors in every uh, mouse clearing not just the ones that it rules so mouse clearing mouse clearing uh, yep over there and then the final one is going to go up the top here so this is pretty true to form uh, and then that gets discarded because it's been done and fortunately the Marquise's turn is now finished with because it did a successful recruit uh, and then it needs to fill up back up to five orders uh, if you are unfortunate enough to have the Marquise go through all the cards and not actually do any recruits then it just basically stops at the fifth card and finishes then uh, so it fills up to five, and then its turn is done. And that is looking like, well, yeah, a pretty reasonable state to be facing the Marquis in, basically. So we adjust the outcast as our first operation. 
Uh, bird cards are ignored for the cases of the lost souls, so we have a prevalence of mouse cards. So now the outcast is into mice. And if it happens again, if we get more mice, then basically this flips over into hated outcast. Uh, but we'll probably see how the intricacies of the outcast bit happen later on. Uh, then we discard all the Lost Souls cards. These actually go into the discard pile now, the actual discard from the Lost Souls box. Uh, then we can do conspiracies and we can do them in uh, mouse clearings because that is now the outcast suit. So I think we're probably going to do a fair amount of converting or some anyway. It's a shame it wasn't hated outcast, but even so. Uh, yeah, so we'll spend two acolytes and two acolytes to do some converts. I don't think we can crusade essentially. We could convert and then crusade, but that's a bit of a waste. Uh, and we're not going to do sanctify because we don't really have that many acolytes to do sanctifying with. And especially in the solo game, where the Mechanical Marquise does not actually build buildings, uh, sanctifying is less useful than it normally would be. So two converts, uh, one of which will probably be over here. So you basically swap out one of their warriors for one of yours, and then one over here. So again, one for one. And that will cut down on the points for the Mechanical Marquise somewhat. And we have a leftover Rackalite, and he can happily stay there until next turn. Uh, on to Reveal. So again, we may as well just reveal everything. Two foxes, a mouse, and a bird. Uh, right, well, I think it's probably worth doing at least one recruit in a fox clearing. And then maybe a build in a fox clearing. So we do have a fox clearing rule, which is currently free of Marquise Warriors, so we'll place it there and hopefully keep that the case. So that's our two foxes. On to the mouse, or the mice. And we could just do a recruit, I think. Uh, yes, let's do one over here and maybe cause some problems there in the future. So a very useful ability of the lizard cult is that it can essentially indoctrinate people anywhere and pop them up all over the map. So we'll try and keep uh, try and keep the Marquise's grip to a bare minimum if we can. And then we have a bird card which we can use to sacrifice and I don't really want to sacrifice so I'm not going to. So that is essentially a bit of a wasted card, but that's fine. Return, real cards, done. And craft using uh, mice in this case. We do not have any mouse gardens out. You can quite easily see how many gardens you're out you have at a glance without having to look around the entire map. So we do not have any mouse gardens and we don't have any cards we can really craft. So we'll skip crafting and draw a card. That's a bit more useful. It's not a bird card anyway, so that's quite happy. Handy. Uh, the Marquise is going to get the one point it gets normally, and then I believe it's going to get two more. So it does have... <coughs> excuse me. It does have a clearing at rules with three warriors, uh, so we'll get two more points. Revealing a card. Oh dear. These bird cards are a pain. Okay. So it's going to battle in every clearing now because birds are wild. Not wild for the lizards, but wild for most other races. So it will battle in every clearing. So we'll do top right first. Yep, that's fine. Uh, then we'll do this one down here. There is a... Uh, a clearing priority that gives the clearing numbers and you basically use that for moving essentially. So in the case of battling the priority doesn't matter particularly, you just battle everywhere uh, that you can, it doesn't matter uh, which order you do it in. So we'll do that one there. Yep. 
So I should be putting these guys into Acolytes. They are defending. That was three, wasn't it? Yes, I believe so. And that one there. Uh, that's unfortunate. So we lose a guy, but we do not get to knock out one of the uh, Marquise's Warriors in return. So, never mind. At least we have plenty of uh, Acolytes, which should be pained with in the future. Then it's going to do recruiting, and it recruits four, this time, into rabbit clearings. So, rabbit over here, that's not too bad, I suppose. And over here, and up the top here. So, done with that. That card is then discarded into our Lost Souls box, and it gets a nice new one there. So, we can not adjust the outcast, because... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not adjust the outcast because the um, the bird card gets ignored, so that will then just get discarded. So we are doing stuff in mouse clearings. Two more converts, I believe, and that is fine. So, converting, and converting, and again the leftover one will just get placed there. Uh, done with birdsong, so now into daylight we're going to reveal cards. Two foxes, let's just kind of order these somewhat slightly easier. So two foxes, two mice, and a bird. Um, yeah, foxes is pretty useful, so we'll do a recruit in a fox clearing. And then we'll do a build in a fox clearing, I think. So we'll take one of our gardens, we'll place it... Is that wise, putting all our fox clearings in one... fox gardens in one clearing? Uh, uh, no, I don't believe that's wise. I, well, anyway, we'll, we'll see. So, a recruit and a build, and then that has uncovered a draw card icon, so next time we get to draw cards, we're going to get to draw two cards. Then we have two mice cards, and we could definitely do a couple of recruits. I think we'll definitely do that. So, we're going to recruit over here, and we're going to recruit... Is there a free clearing? No, unfortunately not. So we'll recruit uh, over here, maybe, I think. And we'll uh, see if we can't knock out their keep and get a point from that anyway. So that's recruiting. And then we have our bird card to sacrifice with. And we're definitely not going to do that. So we'll leave it at that. Cards come back. Uh, we're not going to craft. Crafting mouse cards. We don't have any guards with the craft, so no, we're not going to craft. And we draw two cards. Bloody bird cards, bloody bird cards. So, uh, no, I don't believe, basically. Well, we have fox clearing, so we might want to craft this, uh, this armourist card at some point. Fox gardens, even. And probably not that one, because giving the defender... Or the Marquise, in this case, extra points is a bad idea. So we'll discard that. And I think we'll discard this one as well. So we discarded two cards to bring us back up to... Or back down even to a hand of five. That's fine. And we're done. So Marquise. Marquise gets a point, And no others. So it does not have clearings with three or more warriors. And it rules. So that's fine. So card is fox card and unfortunately it's going to get to uh, put warriors everywhere that is a pain so it's going to battle in fox clearings nope 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 no not going to battle in fox clearings because it does not actually uh, join us in any fox clearings to battle with it's fine uh, it will not move because it does not have more than three warriors in any fox clearing it will have a recruit, and it will recruit everywhere. So this is 
the part where only recruiting in clearings that it rules would be a nice idea, but unfortunately that's not the case, so it's going to put out 12 guys, which I believe is all the guys. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, everywhere. So this is going to be a huge amount of points next turn, unless we can do some serious uh, mitigating. There, and there, and then two, three, uh, four, and the one I missed. So over there. Well, at least it has all its worries on the board anyway. Blimey. Oh, okay. So it definitely recruited, so that card is definitely done with. And goes into Lost Souls. And let me just get a new one out. To be fair, this is probably about as uh, as good as a Mechanical Mask Keys game goes. Uh, I had a game earlier where I was actually doing very well at keeping the cats in, at bay and uh, keeping the numbers down, but um, yeah, it can, as you can see, it can explode all over the place and, uh, and be a horrible mess. So, right, we need to adjust the outcast. Uh, we do get to adjust it now because we do have an ignored bird card and a fox card, so outcast will shift around to foxes. That will get discarded. Discard lost souls, perform a conspiracy. We cannot perform any conspiracies because we do not have sufficient acolytes with which to do so. So fine. And now we get to do two foxes, two mice, and a bird. We could actually craft the bird, so that's useful. Probably not sacrifice that then. Well, we could, but I don't think we'll do it anyway. And we'll make sure we craft with that at the end of the, uh, the phases. So two foxes, one is a recruit, two is a recruit maybe. Uh, we technically rule these places. Uh, even if we were tied up on warriors and buildings, the ability of the lizard cult is basically once you put down a converting garden, you get to uh, rule over the entire clearing. So we will probably con uh, recruit there and at least hopefully uh, keep those gardens alive a bit longer. We have two mice uh, cards available, so... Huh. Well, I believe then what we're going to do is probably that. So we'll do two recruits in that clearing there, and at least that ties it up, and it means the cats can't score points from it. So sure, we'll do that. Uh, we're not going to get rid of any warriors, so uh, sorry, get rid of any warriors to to the acolytes box. So we'll leave that card and not sacrifice with it. Cards come back. We will, however, do a craft. So the outcast suit is foxes. We have sufficient fox gardens out that we can craft with, so we'll definitely craft uh, armourers. And then that goes at the top there. And then we need to get two more cards back in. Uh, there's a rabbit card that could be useful, and another fox card. Well, we'll definitely keep the rabbit card. And... Uh, no, I don't believe I want to remove any warriors. I'm hurting the warriors it is, so we'll get rid of tax collector. Uh, as part of drawing back down to five. So that is sufficient. Over to the Mechanical Marquise, which is going to get at least a point. And then one point, oh sorry, one, two, three. Yep, so it rules in three clearings where it has uh, at least three warriors. So it will get six more points. That is up to 12. That is. Yeah, a pretty reasonable standard for a, a marquee score, to be honest. And then we'll reveal a card, and... Uh, right, so it's going to battle in every mouse clearing. Well, not there, not there, not there, so only here. So... It does two damage. We get two acolytes. Uh, we do one damage, so like so. No recruiting, so it will ignore this card for that purpose, and then discard it, and go straight into a new order. 
and it is a mouse. So, mouse battles. Uh, or do the top right one to start with. Uh, that's a shame. That is indeed a very big problem. That's, uh, well, nothing you can do about it. So, battling here then. And again, we're not doing too much in the way of retaliation, unfortunately. And over here, and I believe that's the final one. I think so, yep. So, and again, we are not doing too much in the way of retaliation. We are getting a lot of acolytes, though. But it would be nice to take off some uh, some cats at the same time. Uh, was that everything? I believe so. Then it's going to recruit two. Well, it's the one, anyway, because it only has one left. And this is where the clearing priority comes into play. So we need to take the lowest number fox clearing, which is the top left one up here, and that is the one that gets the one warrior. Uh, right, okay, fine. Huh. And then that card gets discarded, uh, like so. And we need a new, well, oh, two new, in fact, cards for the Marquise's order. Uh, we're tied up on suits, so the suit does not change. And we have a number of converts to do in fox clearings. That's not terrible, to be honest. It would be nice to do it somewhere else other than fox clearings, but fair enough. Can't complain too much. Although we could actually do a convert, uh, maybe a crusade, two converts, crusade. There's stuff we can do. We're not, uh, we're not out of options just yet. So we'll definitely do one convert. Maybe a second and then a crusade. So, yeah, I think we'll definitely do a second convert. Uh, we'll do a third convert actually over here, where that lone warrior was and has now been successfully moved over to our cause. And then we'll do a crusade. So, two guys get spent, and we will crusade in the top left fox clearing. Or maybe this one, and save our garden. We've got a number of fox cars, so we might actually be able to build in that fox clearing anyway. So I think we will actually do that top left one. And successfully take out the cat with no reprisals. Excellent. That's thinned out the numbers somewhat. Okay. So... That was the bird song we did all conspiracies. Yep, uh, over to daylight and the field. So two foxes, two mice, and a rabbit. So all really useful cards. No birds, thank you very much. So two foxes is probably going to be well a recruit and a build. I think. So we'll recruit. Doesn't really matter. Maybe over here actually, and then a build. So we'll do that for the garden, and we'll place it out there. Like so. So we've got a useful number of fox gardens out. We're definitely getting into scoring territory now, probably. So we'll get those cards out of our hand, maybe next turn for scoring-wise. Two mice. So two recruits into mouse territories. Uh, again, if we recruit twice here, we tie up that territory. So sure, we'll do that. And then a rabbit. And this might be a build. No, it is not going to do a build. Uh, we could recruit there, just to help out that garden somewhat. Or we could recruit over here, maybe, and start being a pain in that area. Well, I think we have to do something about these mouse, uh, these rabbit clearings, so sure, we'll do that. So, cards used, back into hand, and we can craft with fox clearings. Uh, oh, and I realised we crafted the armours and we never used it. That might have been useful, actually, last turn. I'll have to remember that for this turn. Uh, so we could actually craft some of these items. Um, so fox folk, folks, uh, again, fox folk steel will be two points. Not fussed about the item, but it's two points anyway. 
uh, and it's a card that is likely to get uh, discarded anyway by one that comes from our hand now or comes from the draw. So yeah, we'll we'll craft the, uh, the steel sword using our multiple fox gardens in the outcast suit. So this then just gets discarded anyway, and we get the item from the board, and it is there, so we can actually craft it. If the item is not there, you can't craft it. Simple as that, and we get two points. So we are on the board on points. We could do the crossbow. That's only a point. I'm not that fussed. Then we draw. Well, we're going to draw two cards. So we're going to draw more than we have to, and we have to reduce down. But one of them might be a bird. So two cards. One of them is indeed a bird. So we'll definitely keep this mouse one, and that one is. Well, it would be nice to have that and try and uh, try and use it, but no, I think we'll probably. Can we craft that? Uh, we roll in sufficient numbers of clearings to uh, to maybe craft it. Oh no, we have to have four. Well, if we get another fox garden out, we could then craft this if it comes back round to the outcast suit and it's still foxes. And we would get one, two, three, four, five, maybe five points as things stand at the moment. Or discard it and... Well, five points is five points. It's not bad. OK, we'll keep that for the time being and maybe get more some better use out of it than one of these cards which we'll have to get rid of instead then and probably uh, a mouse card I think to be honest I'd rather not get rid of any of these uh, fine we'll get rid of this mouse card although if we discard the bird card into our lost souls box then as things are at the moment, the uh, the outcast suite would switch over to hated outcast because we'd be going for foxes again. Chances of that happening once we get a discarded card from the uh, from the marquee, though, not very likely, probably. So yeah, we'll discard that to bring our hand down to five, and we'll leave it at that. So done. Marquise is going to get more points, I believe, one point, uh, and then one, two, three. And it's tied up there, so that's six points. So that is up to 19. So the way things are going, it's going to win in two turns. Um, okay, well, fair enough. So, battling in all mouse clearings. So, battle there. Uh, unfortunately, again, for no reprisals. Those zeros are really hurting us. And anyone else? No, no, no. Down here, bottom left. Do we want to... I'm not sure. So, do we have to discard this before we can see what hits we've rolled? Or do we discard this afterwards? It says ignore all rolled hits taken. Well, I'll roll them away and... So, unfortunately, we would lose this guy with no, uh, with no way of kicking the cats out. It would give us an acolyte to use, though. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll leave the armourers for another turn, and maybe we'll get better use out of it later on. So that's fine. We'll do that, and then it's going to recruit twice in every rabbit. Well, it's only got two instances of that left to do. So the clearing priority states uh, bottom left, bottom right is the first one. So there, and then bottom. Oh dear. I probably should have looked at that first before I got rid of all my wires there. Uh, that one. Okay, fair enough. So that is then discarded. And a new one into the card row. So, uh, just the outcast. So the outcast has not changed, it's tied up, so that's fine. So we can do one convert maybe in a fox clearing. 
don't have any... Well, we have one guy in a fox clearing here that we could convert. Might be time to do a crusade, actually. So we'll spend two guys and we'll do a crusade. And we'll probably... See, this one is a huge pain. But the chances of knocking out sufficient warriors uh, is actually zero with what we have available to us. So instead we will crusade down from this one. I'll we'll send one guy down to help out against the cats down there. So a matching clearing down, or we could crusade in a clearing, but we're fine as we are in all... Well, I say fine, we're, uh, we're doing okay in other fox clearings. So we'll crusade down to here and then do that one. That's pretty good. So all cats get knocked out. We do lose one guy, unfortunately. It is not a defending battle, so we do not get the guy back into the acolyte box. But he did the job, so that's fine. Uh, conspiracy's done with, on to daylight. So, revealing all cards. Well, we could uh, use the fox card now to build our fourth fox garden in a place we rule at the top there and then that would be enough to craft this royal claim and then we could score it next bird song so yeah we'll do that uh, we have two rabbit cards and a mouse well I think the two rabbit cards are actually going to have to be uh, here to protect our garden uh, as much as we would like to expand everywhere else and we would dearly love to do so and then the mouse card we could recruit in a mouse clearing or we could build out a mouse garden uh, we are woefully short on mouse gardens actually out in the in the world but I think Building out into mouse clones is probably a better use of our resources at the moment, so we'll try that. Uh, is that the right thing to do? Yes. We'll do that for the time being, and we'll see how it goes, basically. So, done all cards. We really should be scoring. We might score foxes next turn if we live that long. Uh, then we will craft... Sorry, we'll turn cards back to our hand. Then we will craft uh, using guns matching the outcast suit so we can craft using foxes. They are all... Uh, so we do have indeed four fox uh, gardens. So we get to craft the royal claim. And that will get used next turn. And then we draw two more cards... Well, that ambush would be very nice to use, but unfortunately, as the uh, the Marquise board states, uh, it does not get played against the Mechanical Marquise, so we cannot use ambushes. So we may discard that one then, since it's a bit of a wasted card anyway. Like so. And that at least gives us two Fox cards to use next turn, one for doing something with, and then probably one for scoring. So, yep, okay. Uh, on to the Mechanical Marquise, which is going to get a point, and then two more for that one, and two. So again, another six, up to 20. Yeah, I think we can see where this is going. Uh, it does not technically rule here because it uh, is tied up on warriors and buildings, but even if it was not, we still have a building there which trumps all, uh, even the Eerie. Uh, even the Eerie's rule of tying up for clearings is trumped by the Lizard Colts. Uh, gardens, which is very useful, but in this case not enough to save us, I don't think. And then we go on to uh, battling and all fox clearings. So one there, one there, nothing over there. So two battles, uh, top one first. Uh, right, so one for one, yep, that's fair enough. And the bottom one, and zero for zero. Well, that's okay. We don't lose anybody, but we don't get an act, unfortunately. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, 
on to recruiting. So it is going to recruit, and it does just have enough warriors, one in every mouse clearing. So recruit. Uh, there, this is, I suspect, more than enough to push it over the edge. And the final one, over here. Okay. And that gets discarded. So that is that. And we are going to not adjust the outcast because we're tied up on uh, cards. We discard Lost Souls. We don't have enough acolytes to do anything with, unfortunately. So into... Ah, before we leave Birdsong, we will remember to score our royal claim. Is that going to be... It's some points. It's more than we have at the moment, so we may as well do that. So we discard this to the Lost Souls box. And we get to score clearing as we rule, including ones we are tied up in with gardens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yep, six. That's more than I was expecting. So sure, we will indeed get six points up to eight. Uh, I keep forgetting to use armourers. So, okay, well, I'll try to remember that next time, if there is one. Uh, we have two foxes, two rabbits, and a mouse. Well, we can definitely recruit into a fox clearing. We could build into a fox clearing and then score a fox clearing, actually. I mean, we're doing okay on fox clearings. We don't particularly have much in the way of uh, worrisome opponents apart from this solitary cat down here. So we can actually uh, quite happily build with one put out our final fox garden and then score. So we have to discard this particular card when we score it. So in this case I think we'll probably discard the gently used knapsack instead. And that goes into there. And then we get that many points depending on how many gardens we put out. So four points in this case. So twelve. So this is where the uh, the Lizard Cult engine really starts racking up. Once you have sufficient gardens out, you can then hopefully score them every turn, as long as you keep them alive and get big points. Uh, a bit late in this case, I think, unfortunately, but that is the general gist anyway. Uh, two rabbits. So we do want to be a pain in rabbit clearing, don't we? Although I don't think we're going to have to be a sufficient enough pain, unfortunately. So if we just, well, go here and here, and then a mouse card, and we can recruit in a mouse place, and we'll probably go over here. Unfortunately, it's a bit late in the game, I think, but still, return reveal cards, we can craft with foxes, we do not have anything we want to actually craft, so that's fine. And then we draw two more cards, one of which is another fox, and one of which is a bird. Well, bird can go, and we'll keep the fox, which we useful for scoring, like so. On to the bird, uh, the mechanical marquise for birdsong, which will get a default point, and then points to bring it up to 30. So... It's scored the 30 points. Um, it does not... You don't go uh, equal turns. Once someone gets 30, that is game over. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, well done to the Mechanical Marquise. Uh, we were getting our engine a bit too late in the game, I think, and the particular card the Mechanical Marquise brought out, where it basically chucks out every warrior everywhere, uh, kind of did it for us. But, yeah, that's pretty much the flow of the game. Um, and how it goes. The Mechanical Marquise is very simple um, once you get the hang of this turn structure and the way it goes. So it's a very good opponent and it is very good to uh, use in learning uh, new... That's what I'm looking for. Uh, new factions against. So if you've got a new faction and you're not particularly sure how to play, shove it up against the Mechanical Marquise and see how you go and you'll get the hang of it in no time, really. Uh, so it is that. And, yeah, uh, it 
ticks along quite nicely. It doesn't uh, overstay its welcome because there is that default timer where the Marquise is getting points every turn. So it is going to clear, clean up the game relatively quickly unless you can get ahead of the curve and win it for you instead. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.